There we go. Here we are. Here I am. We're live. We're rolling. I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> we we ran some strikes last night. Yeah, so we. That's did. why you're really really tired. We we threw Rhett into the deep end of Destiny too. I did not have fun. <laughs> I played my first uh, PvP round and zero kills. I just got to the part the part no, you where got I two just, kills. You got two oh, I kills. Did? Yes. Okay. Well. It was dumb luck. And I just got to the part where I got so pissed off that I would just spawn and then stand in the middle of the map and just wait for someone to come and kill me because it was <laughs> almost just more useful to do that. So anyways, that was, yeah, last night. <laughs> Man, well, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, <clears throat> we um, spent a little time this morning trying to sort out this Discord thing and give everybody as- access. But um, for those that are part of our Patreon and want to join the Discord channel, uh Info on how to do that is on the Patreon, but we're going to try to figure out another way because this is a, uh, it, it's, it's more difficult than it needs to be. <laughs> we have like, we have put together this strange system of like six different apps and we're sending video files here and recording here. And then we're on Patreon, uh, discord and then we're on YouTube using a different app. And then it's, it's just a, it's a variable shit show. So we're going to try and streamline things over here because for some reason, um, if you, the people that are watching this live can't hear my mic, so they're just hearing my terrible computer mic right now. Uh, so if anyone in the uh, in the chat or anyone in the comment section knows of a good just all in one system to let two people live stream together and broadcast that to a small group of people, uh, a private group of people, please let us know, because my God, I am. It is, it is just driving me crazy. What yes. does that look for? Uh, something flew into my face. Uh, oh, <laughs> we, cool. Morgan has like slowly transitioned a lot of the things in our house to like down. So, you know, pillows uh, yeah. are down, like our comforter. And so every now and again, there'll just be feathers flying. Mm. And I, I think it's a ghost. So yeah, that's part of what you're paying for with uh, with down. You you want the experience of like having stuff just like kind of fly in your mouth randomly. Like yeah. <laughs> um, oh man. Anyway, how was your week? Um, it was pretty good. Played a played a gig this weekend. Me and uh, me and old boy Noah Guthrie had a duo show opening for uh, Mr. Edwin McCain mm-hmm. up in North Carolina. I'll be. Yeah, man, he played that song, and I've seen Edwin before once or twice. And uh, yeah, I was a kid. I was probably eight years old, seven years old when that song came out, and it was everywhere. My oh, God, yeah. that song was everywhere. And, did he? Uh, did he have any other hits? Yeah, he had like one or two other hits because I remember it was one of those things where you go to see an artist live, and then you're like, "Oh yeah, I forgot. that was you, wasn't it? You you did that." So um, yeah, he's he's had a successful career, man. And oh, he cut all of, his hair off. He no, used to he have like, oh, did he yeah, grow it, it back? Yeah, okay, it's like down to his shoulders, whatever. But it was fun. I was talking to uh, to his guitar player Larry, who's been with him for like twenty years. Larry's super cool guy, uh, playing Helix on the gig, of course. And uh, he had a Helix that was doing all of his uh, everything, amp modeling effects and everything. And then he was going into, I think it was like a '66 basement head blackface basement head into a 412 that was like just barely turned on mm-hmm. and it was just there for stage volume just for a little bit of monitoring and i was like all right yeah there it is man basements used to be that was like the blackface sleeper you could get them for like 500 bucks sometimes they were so cheap and now like people figured it out <laughs> they're like more money but mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. They're, they're a great they're an all around great amp. And like, if you're into like tweaking or having something, someone tweak things for you, uh, the basement blackface basement amps are great platforms. You could mod like one channel to be more like a Marshall style and the other channel to be, you know, Fendery. Super yep. cool. Super, super friend cool. of mine in Nashville. Um, Hank Bourne, who's an amazing guitar player. Uh, he, he put out a solo record a couple years ago that a bunch of my friends played on. So everyone go check out Hank Bourne. Uh, but he has or had a blackface basement that was modded. And my God, the amount of gain that you could get out of that amp is just mind boggling. It, it's total plexi territory when it, or at least his was. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So, yeah, it was fun. We we played the show. It was, it was relatively, it was like four or 500 people maybe up, nice. in, up in Black Mountain. Brand new venues. It's actually kind of a cool thing. So, this place called Silverado's, it's right next to Pisgah Brewing. If anybody's familiar with like the, the um, Black Mountain, Asheville, North Carolina area, there's this big brewery there called Pisgah, which is also a killer venue. I've played there a couple times. We did the first Marcus King Family Reunion Festival there. I've seen Jason Isbell there. It's a really, really cool outdoor venue. This place is literally next door, and it was this um, old biker dive bar called Silverado's, and it is like a dive dive Mm -hmm. it's cool but the bar sits on like two and a half acres and so um the guy eric that's now the owner during when the pandemic and shutdown hit he bought the business he bought the bar and uh got the land and decided he's going to build this big outdoor venue they're using because the entire two and a half acres has a liquor license oh nice (laughs) yeah (laughs) smart cool smart so He had this huge um, stage. If anyone saw me on Instagram posting about it, it was this mobile stage built in China, huge, huge stage festival setup, And it's just going to live there. And he's starting a concert series. Um, And this was the first show of his summer concert series. And I was like, man, respect this dude in the middle of the pandemic was like, okay, I'm going to take the opportunity do something I've always wanted to do. I'm going to buy this business, buy this bar and build an outdoor like festival style venue and just start booking acts. And that's what he's doing. So um, Noah and I were literally the first people to play that stage. They had gotten it in shipped in and set up at three 30 AM the night before on Friday night. (laughs) We played it Saturday evening. So that's awesome. Good time there. There was um, this guy in Sparta, Tennessee, where where I grew up, and when did did you ever go to Starwood Amphitheater? Ampli, ampli, <laughs> I can't Mm-mm. speak. The, so that was like one of the big, big outdoor venues outside Nashville um, for a long time, and it closed. <clears throat> and this guy bought like everything. He bought the seats. He bought the 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 sound reinforcement. He bought all of it and made this venue outside Sparta, and like had these grand ideas for it, but I don't think he had any sort of liquor licenses because Sparta for a long time was a dry County. And it was just a whole, like it was an odd place to put a music venue. Right. And, um, man, I I had some friends that would play there and I would see videos and it was just like this weird, like middle of nowhere, gigantic stage, gigantic speakers, but just no one there. Mm -hmm. And it was such a, weird uh attempt at setting up a an outdoor thing i think outdoor music spaces are really hard i mean they have to be the hardest thing to like do i think we're gonna see a lot more of them though i mean post pandemic it seems to be you know i don't know what's harder but making an outdoor space or making like a good indoor club or bar kind of set up sound good you know what i mean well as far as sound goes yeah um but it's got to be easier just to like, okay, I have this limited amount of space. It's like you can decorate it. You can, you can, if you had like a small inside venue, it, I, I feel like that would be easier at least to like come up with an idea. But if you just have like a field and you have mm-hmm. to like put a stage, <laughs> it's like, okay, mm-hmm. you know, but, but yeah. Um, that was man, your week. It was fine. It was fine. We, uh, well, actually, no, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I, to, I've, I've told you, mm-hmm. but I just had, problem after problem. So, um, I had some PCBs that I messed up a a bunch that I designed improperly because I'm finally finishing projects. I started when I was just completely swamped and I, I'm seeing how distracted I was because there's all these really small errors that I made. There's an upcoming project that I'm working on with some other people and, the jacks on it's a pedal and the jacks on this pedal I, I wired backwards i sent the tip which usually goes to like you know the input or output signal the hot i sent that to ground and then the signal i sent to the sleeve which is normally the ground on a guitar cable and for the life of me i couldn't figure out why this pedal was just humming and not making any noise and then i looked at the circuit board and i was like oh the jack is backwards it's completely wired 
backwards and I'm an idiot. So <laughs> I had to uh, fix that. I had another board that was working on a project and I flipped the polarity of some components intentionally, but I didn't realize in doing that everything else had to change. And mm. it was uh, like just a bunch of things and um, all that. But Friday, they got the paperwork for the Novo space. They signed that paperwork. And now the only thing they're waiting on is uh, insurance. And as soon as they <clears throat> get their insurance policy revised, we can start getting in there and moving stuff. And we'll hopefully this week we'll be able to start setting up the new space. Nice. That's going to be awesome, man. I yes. can't wait to see it. Um, do you have an idea of when you're going to be moved in and set up and rolling? I have no idea. I mean, really, I'm at the mercy of an insurance agent now because we're not going to do any construction. We're just going to get in there. Everyone just needs needs the space. Novo has, has their, um, their second CNC showed up. So... Like you've seen how big their CNC is, that they have they have to make the room like now. So we're, we're not going to wait on any contractors, and I don't even know if I'm going to paint. I mean, it's at least yeah. I'll I'll paint my office space, but that's like later. This like my my the workspace. It's just a white room. I think I'm just going to leave it, yeah. you know, and uh, and not worry about it. But I mean, if if they can get that early in the week, then I hope I'll I'll order all the workbenches and have all that stuff by the end of the week um, because it only takes like a day or so to get that and start putting the shelves together and setting up everything, setting up my pickup winder station (laughs) and all that. (laughs) Have you, have you messed with any of that stuff yet? Have you tried any, any winding stuff? I got, I got some of the bobbins and like all the, the parts, but I haven't actually got the winder yet. So um, yeah, not yet. I I hope next week uh, after all this, yeah, if, if we get everything set up in the workshop, I will be trying to wind my first pickup on the weekend. We'll see. Nice, nice. Yeah, well, there you go. Kind yeah. of a rough week for both of us, actually. But uh, <laughs> yeah. my, mine is just YouTube trouble stuff that nobody cares about. So we're gonna move on. Um, do we have a uh, do we have a rig? To yes, dip? sir. Oh, yes. do we say this is episode forty? By the way, I no. feel like it's a milestone. We just like kind of skimmed right over it. <laughs> yeah, no, we yeah, episode forty. We, forty. Wow. We're was that over the hill? Is that we're over the hill? That? Lordy, lordy, look who's forty. <laughs> trying to think of all the stupid shit people say for fortieth birthdays. Uh, I hate all that stuff. <laughs> I hate all that stuff. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> God, we're so jaded. No, it's just lame. There's, the, have you seen? <laughs> it's like a progressive insurance. Maybe it's Geico. There's like these really funny commercials where it's like this older dude and it's younger people who are turning into their parents, and he's like like slapping their hands for like all these like lame things they're doing. Like when you sit down, going ah, like doing all these things, <laughs> and it's like I feel that way about like all that stuff. It's just like mm. no, it's still, no, don't be like that. Don't be like an old person. Right. <laughs> Right. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So nice. Dip in a rig. This is Mr. Devin Hassenflu's rig. So Devin works at Diadario. Uh Diadario, Diadario. I I always say I, I said Diadario for a long time and then I heard Didario. Didario, that's it. Okay. Are we sure that's it? I'm gonna look it up. All right. How Devin. To- right, is Devin in the chat? He's usually here, but um we we should settle this debate once and for all because there he is. All right, Devin, what is it? D uh, Dario. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop saying to Dario because that, that makes me feel like a loser saying to Dario <laughs> thinking that it's right. You know what it is? It's the equivalent of like the white kid who did one semester study abroad and he speaks with like a completely <laughs> American accent, except for when he says one Spanish word and he tries to say it and the, the actual like accent dialect. Right. Yes. Does that bother anyone else? That drives me nuts when, yeah. when I hear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So I did a study abroad in Barcelona and, uh, <laughs> why do you so have a lisp? What, <laughs> that's what, uh, saying de Dario makes me feel like. So I'm going to go back to Dia Dario. Dia Dario. Anyways. But yeah, so Devin works there and he also works for, uh, Promark as well. He's nice. a product lead over there, but he sent this rig and it's awesome. This is great. And wait, so, wait, wait, wait. Is that is that real? On the top of the amp? Uh-huh. Looks real to me. Okay. That's a real 
that's a real that's the real boy. This I, is I, our first our first clon. I think our first real one. I th- I think so. I think it is. All right, let's let's give give us the rundown here. <clears throat> okay, so he's got uh, this. This is what he uses for playing uh, live in a local classic rock grunge blues cover band. With gigs coming back, he's you know getting back into fighting shape. Pre COVID, he used it for sessions for reference records for video game soundtracks, which is cool, awesome. Hello, uh, <clears throat> all his guitars here. He's um, He's modified them all with the vintage inspired pots, which are like replica of Central Lab pots. And he's got a 2005 Gibson Custom Shop reissue, 62 reissue SG uh, that's been re- <laughs> refinned. And it's got Brandon Wound premium PAFs. Wicked. 63 uh, Les Paul SG Jr. Uh, 2007 Road Worn Telly with Joel Wilkins pickups. And then a 79 Gibson Les Paul Custom in Silver Burst, which is sick. And as far as amps, he's got a black a Supro uh, Black Magic Reverb with a matching one by twelve. <clears throat> he has a Klon Centaur, which stays at home because I, you know, yeah, sure, <laughs> it should. <laughs> right, it should it should it probably should. His board is built on a Vertex board. He's got an RMC Ten Wah on the floor, which I respect. Bonus shoils for that. Peterson Strobo Stomp, Mythos Wildwood Mjolnir, the King of Tone. Whirlwind Orange Box, a Boss CE2 Waza, a Catalan Bread Bell Epoch, a Vertex Boost, and it's all powered by a Chox with Mogami cable and square plugs. This right here, this is a pro rig. Yes. This is a pro rig. Um, every single thing here is well thought out, has a purpose. There's no redundancies. <clears throat> There's no, you know... So some of the stuff is uh, well. It's just yeah. This is all extremely well thought out. You could take this to any and every gig, at least that I play, and absolutely kill it. So the guitars. I mean, this is you've got all the bases covered here. Yeah. You got the uh, you got the SG with the Brandon Wilds. What year was that? The refin. Two thousand five. Okay. Cool. Cool. Wait, that was refinished. It's a two thousand five and had a refin. Yeah, that's or what he I said. I don't, you? It, uh, he said it had a, a refin. So I don't think maybe he's crazy like me and just says, this isn't right. <laughs> What's to change it? Uh, and then this was that the 64 SG with the P90? Uh, it's, uh, 63. 63. Okay. That's, that's that guitar. The one he, it's funny because he's got it kind of hiding back there in the corner. Yeah. That's the one for me. Single dog gear P90, 63 SG. It probably is relatively light probably doesn't weigh a whole lot um i bet that guitar rips man oh yeah dude i've never i've never played an uh an sg jr a vintage one that and like unless the frets were just gone they all just like howl that's yeah it does it it does the thing it does the thing 100 <laughs> percent. then uh the telly i mean come on killer i always like that color combo that sort of uh tv yellow with the white guard the Mm -hmm. maple it's very light looking and then this is interesting the silver burst this one has not gone piss burst for for a 79 Mm -hmm. typically these uh so for the for the uninitiated you know in 70s in the 70s gibson did you know the silver burst think adam jones from tool um his well now signature that they just did the uh how how many of those adam jones pauls did they do i don't know maybe like Uh, 100 or so Anyways, silver, it's a black sunburst, and they're known uh, colloquially as the piss burst because the um, the top coat, as most top coats uh, on vintage Gibsons would do, would yellow with age. And on top of that silver, it kind of turns piss yellow. Yeah. Uh, but this one has not. This one has has maintained its, uh, its silver in the middle, which is interesting. I think that's... Yeah. I don't know how rare that is, but I have not seen a lot of those. Typically, when they're that old, they start to yellow. Yeah, I've seen a few that that weren't totally yellowed out, and 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 it's weird. They they did a gold like that too, like a gold burst, um, gold like a black to gold. And so I've seen some of those, thinking, man, this thing really changed color. <laughs> and it was like, oh no, that's uh, no, that's actually good. Like that. um, but yeah, and I did see that in between the potentiometers, there's a little toggle switch, which is like. On a '70s guitar, I feel like it's almost odd to not see someone who like 
<laughs> did a coil tap or a phase right. switch or something. Right. I, so many guitars, especially of that era, have little modifications that people did because it was, I don't even know like how readily available push pull pots were back then, you know? Right, right. So, and then the board. Also, brownie points for wah on the floor. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I, I respect that. And then uh, let's see, we got a self shill here, Wildwood Mjolnir. Well, yes, and he so he had one. And someone stole it, right? And I replaced it because like that sucks, you know. And anytime, yeah. I, I will say out there in the world, if you have a Mythos product and someone rips you off and like takes it, or if it like gets destroyed, I had another guy that something got messed up in like a car accident. Just email me and I'll do my damnedest to fix it or replace it. So. Or bring justice to the, yes, to the person. Right. That, <laughs> <laughs> find their photo and put it on the internet. Um, then we got the King of Tone. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a classic. It's it classic. Is. It's a bit overrated. Did, how did you like the one, the clone that I made you? It's it's cool. It's yeah. a really great overdrive. Is it worth, what are people paying for them now mm. that are not on the wait list? Five, six hundred bucks? I think closer to seven, maybe more. Yeah, don't do that. Don't pay that. They're not that good. Sorry. Uh, Devin, if you paid that much for this, I'm sorry. But I think I think you overpaid. Uh, but if you got on the wait list and you paid, what do they retail for if you buy them from uh, Mike? Like 300 something. Yeah, that's that's Oh, my great. God. I think Dude, it's they're worth. 800, 1200. No, 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 uh, no, no. Holy smokes. There's a bunch on here for over a grand on Reverb. Listen, <laughs> um, from your uh, from your your. Jesus Uncles uh, Rhett and Zach, t- t- take it from us. Don't pay that much money for a king of tone. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it was two eighty nine. Calky dust two eighty nine. Yeah. New two eighty nine. Get on All the wait list long. if you got to have one. Get on the wait list uh, and just do that, or buy two Prince of Tones. Do and he, that. Devin waited, which I respect. Respect, Devin. <laughs> Respect. All right, cool. So I'm not going to deduct points for that then. Um, <laughs> the Vertex Boost in red. Look, Vertex is a controversial brand. We all know it. And you're either on one side or the other. Um, Zach and I are on the pro Vertex train. And I think as boost pedals go, the Vertex Boost is really, really hard to beat. It's good. It's very good. Yeah, and it's got the cool feature where you can you can plug a volume pedal into it and and control the boost that way, which is really nice. Um, and then what's on the top right of the uh, of the board there? I can't. That's the Whirlwind Orange box. It's like a uh, Phase ninety sort of thing. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah. Oh, respect. I think it's too. Phase ninety. It, it may be or Phase forty five, but it's some sort of like MXR Phaser style thing, which is like I, if you're gonna have a Phaser, it's hard to beat. A ninety sort of thing. or a small stone, small, small stone. stone. Yeah, it's a different thing than a phase ninety, but it's it's another like classic phaser sound, you know. Yeah, it, I feel like small stones, like phase ninety, is like stoner rock, and small stone is like outlaw country. <laughs> yeah, sort of exactly what I was gonna say. Cosmic yeah. outlaw country stuff, mm-hmm. um, or the black keys. So. <laughs> And then uh, we got, what is that? The Wazacraft Chorus. That's like right. a CE2 clone, right? Well, yeah, it's a CE2 and it has a switch to go to CE1, which cool. um, is slightly different. It has like a preamp thing and stuff. Uh, I have a vintage CE2 that I... Humble I'm, brag. Well, I mean, hey, they're not that expensive. I, I, <laughs> I got pretty lucky on Reverb. I was just patient and someone posted one for reasonable and I snagged it. Um, and I, I, I did some mods to kind of change the, the amount of speed and stuff that it has and slightly tweak the depth and fun fact for anybody that has a vintage Japanese, um, a boss pedal, some of them are designed to work at 12 volts and, uh, like they'll work on nine volts, but they don't sound completely correct. And it's just two components and you can jump them. You can like desolder them, jump them and it works fine with nine volts. So, um, I did that every vintage boss pedal I've ever had. I do that, but it's 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 an amazing chorus, and again, there's like um, not the small stone. What's the small clone? Like mm-hmm. that's the the alternative, the the sister of the CE2. Uh, different thing, great thing. But they're and the thing awesome. with electro harmonic stuff. Josh at JHS, they did a really great video on this last year sometime, where they compared the modern like nano series electro harmonic stuff to like the big box vintage ones, and the the modern ones sound just as good 
in some cases better than the old stuff. So just buy the modern ones and save you some money. Yeah, and, the, and they're true bypass, the old ones. Yeah. The bypass is horrible. It's and they're so way bad. more pedal board friendly. Yeah. Way they, more robust. They don't yeah. have headphone jack power adapters. And, stuff. <laughs> uh, and then the Bell Epoch. That's the Epoch. Uh, Deluxe. Deluxe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Killer. Did you get that picture I sent you like an hour ago? That Echoplex? No. Somebody emailed me yesterday and was uh, up in, I think, Raleigh, North Carolina. Some dude posted a bunch of vintage gear and there is a early solid state Echoplex. He's asking 1400 for. Oh, wow. Um... I thought I texted it to you. Let me see. If... Maybe not. I'll look it up in a second. Anyway. Yeah. Great delay. Echoplex style tape delay tape echo going into the front of the black magic combo. Now you said he has a matching 112 for this. That's what I said in the email. Wow. So I, I, I will have to ask Devin uh, if this is the one with the master volume or not. I feel like the one, the, the black magics I've played. Cause I, I remember when they first came out and it was like, everyone was talking about it. Cause it was the Jimmy page Mm-hmm. thing you know mm-hmm. and they sound really good but then they they put a, a a master volume on them and if you turn the master all the way up i think it's fine but i i feel like this the the real magic of those amps pun not intended is that you just got to crank it and, and don't run it with any sort of like don't choke it out because the secret is just to have it loud and pushed and, and it sounds great with the master all the way up and like running it kind of clean but Th- that one, and then they made the smaller one that was kind of like the Keith Richards sort of vibe. Yeah. I can't remember the name of it. Same aesthetic with the white stripe. They're awesome. I've not played the ma- the Black Magic. Oh, it's good. It's good. I, I have, I've i played a handful of Supros. It's hard for me to keep the models straight with the Supro lineup yeah. because they kind of all look the same. Yes. And they, they all have like different names and different features. And it's just, it's tough but i haven't spent a ton of time looking into them i have a local shop here that's a supro dealer and every time i go in i like plug it in it's like oh it sounds good now i will say a few years ago when i was first starting my channel they loaned me the comet like one i think it was a 110 combo Mm -hmm. and that didn't sound good because it was way too dark it was just like a master volume and a tone control and you had to have the tone all the way up and it was still too dark it needed a different speaker in it and some some circuit tweaks. So hopefully they address that because this was like three years ago now. But um, yeah. every other Super O I've played has sounded really good. I'm right there with you. I feel like some of the first ones that came out, the, the ones that were blue, um, yep. Yep. were very dark um, to the point of being slightly unusable unless yep. you're running like, you know, the Strat Bridge pickup all the time or something. But the Black Magic. And I think it might have been the comp. No, I'll have to look up that other model, the smaller one that's in this style. Um, but the Black Magic specifically, this one he says it has master and a tube tube driven reverb, which is the later model. But the first nice. ones are pretty straight ahead, and they sound wicked. We used them for a lot of videos at Carter Drink. Drink. So. Nice. And then of course the Klon. We almost skipped over the the flex here. Hey, mine's hey, mine's sitting on top of. My two rock, right? <laughs> God, you, you <clears throat> nerds and your clones, man. Um, listen, I, I, okay. Maybe this should be a whole episode. Tread lightly, my friend. I know, I know, I know, and I know you've you've built the mythos uh, lore around <laughs> the Mjolnir, which I think is great, by the way. My what I was about to say is, um, much like the, uh. King of Tone, I can't in good conscience recommend anyone go out and spend the money that real clones are going for nowadays. No. I just can't do it. Even if you have the money, if you and you're a collector and you have to have a thing, that's fine, right? If and if but but for a player, someone who's like looking for the clone thing, there is so many better ways to spend what three thousand dollars? Is that what a good at street price for one now? I guess, you know, it's so hard to say, but absolutely. I mean, I, I bought mine for 1500 bucks. Um, that's, it, that's fine. I mean, compared it, to even, what they are now. Like, yeah. Even now. I mean, and like, that's a lot of money. I'm not like, can oh, say yeah. like for a pedal. For yeah. Sure. For like just a single overdrive pedal. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I get that Bill makes a few now new and sells them on eBay, which is cool. And like, honestly, 
you know, if if you could go to Bill and buy a new Klon for fifteen hundred bucks, I think it's probably worth it from from a collector's standpoint. You know, like it, it will hold its value unless he just starts cranking them out again. But the the market on them is insane, and I do think that you can find a Klon style pedal, not not even a Mjolnir. You can find something that gives you that sound for sub three hundred dollars easy yeah. all day long yeah. right and and ag- again like i will because he won't say it i i think i've played a lot of the, the clones i think the mjolnir specifically the wildwood mjolnir because rick has one um i don't have one apparently i'm not good enough <laughs> for one but uh maybe I'll, maybe I'll, I'll, I, I need two million subscribers or something first before i can get a wildwood mjolnir <laughs> he bought whatever, he bought but. his from wildwood before they went crazy that's, so. that's true i'm just fucking with you i uh but no i've played rick's wildwood mjolnir i have one of the big gold box mjolnirs um the j rocket the archer like there are some killer clon clones out there that do that clon thing really really well um without going out and spending the big money so yeah. Yeah, I mean it's cool. It's a collector's piece. If you're into the collecting thing, like by all means, man, whatever blows your skirt up. I I personally don't have that. I don't really think I have that collector sort of mentality. That like, you know, I need to have the thing because of the story behind it and because of. I mean, it's cool, mm-hmm. but yeah, that's just me. Yeah, I mean, I it, it I would not spend what they they cost now. Uh, and for me, it was just a, um, it, it's mainly for my own edification. You know, I've been building these pedals for so long and, and I finally saw one that I thought was reasonable, uh, at the time. I mean, it was definitely reasonable now, but, right. uh, it, it, you know, I, I needed to know. <laughs> right. Because I, I, I've well, played a and bunch. Also, you're a pedal builder. Right. Who, one of your bread and butter pedals is a clone clone. So yeah. that I understand, right? Like you, it's, it's almost like a. A research and development purchase that, yeah. for you, but for your average player, you know, if you've got like, like a church gig or something, or or a bar gig, and you think like, man, I could, I could, if, and this maybe maybe nobody exists. I'm just making this up in my head, but I'm picturing someone that's like, okay, I could spend three hundred dollars on a Wildwood Mjolnir or something in that range, or I could spend four thousand dollars on the real Klon. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't yeah. don't spend the four G's on the real clon. I think if, if you want that shape, just buy a Seriatone. You know, yeah. I don't I don't think Seriatones sound as close as uh, they should, mm. but they do sound good and they look the part. And you know, they're way cheaper. Is so. it Seriatone or Seriatone? I always said Seriatone, but I have no idea. So all right, second time this episode, let's settle this debate. Someone in the chat. Is it Seriatone or is it Seriatone? Someone, someone hit us up. Let us know. Um, all right. So let's, let's judge this rig here again. Yes. I, I can't, I can't stress enough that this is, this is a pros rig. Like this is, yes. yeah, this ticks all my boxes. It's doing all the things I'm trying to think what I, I would, I would add, some kind of reverb uh, to give you some options there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know the Black Magic has a built-in spring, but um, I, I think I think you could do well with adding some kind of reverb effect on there, even if it's like an RV five or something along those lines. Um, Strymon, the Flint. Although you have the Black Magic has tremolo too, right? Yeah, it's got two are, are, tremolo. Are you fine without any sort of tap delay? Because the the Bell Epoch is no tap. Yeah, you know, the more two years ago, I would have said no. Two years ago, I would have said I need a tap tempo delay. But the more I've gotten into, at least my uh, over the years, it's like your tastes change with mm. food and stuff. I think your taste and tone changes too. Um, and I've gotten to the point now where I care. Le- it's since I bought my Tape Echo last year and started playing that, I, I'm using tap tempo less. I right. kind of don't care if my delays are out of time with what I'm playing, not all the time, but yeah, I, th- I think that that epoch deluxe is a great pedal. Yeah. So yeah, that's maybe the only thing I would change. I love the vertex pedal board. Um, I love the power supply. I love how clean it is. I love the guitars. I love the amp. This is a 9.8 shoils for me, man. I, 
This does everything. Like to me, this pedal board and and guitar uh, assortment and the amp. It's like there's nothing that I couldn't do on this. You know, you dial the gain up. You had you have all those gain stages. You essentially have four gain stages. You could do almost anything, uh, even into really high gain stuff. Uh, Calculus said no fuzz, dude. Crank all that gain, roll your tone back. You're kind of yeah. faux fuzz. You can get with the king of tone. You you can stack those two together and get and and the the clon with those two together. You can get into fuzz territory. Yeah. So I mean. <laughs> I'm thinking 9.9. The only yeah. thing, the only thing I would kind of like to see would, um, man, I don't, I don't know. It's just like I, I feel like I can't give it a perfect ten. I don't know why, but I do love it. Maybe I should. Let's just do it. Ten. Yeah. Look at that, <laughs> Devin. You made you made the wall of fame. Look for, at that for, for the mainly because there's a wall on the floor. Man, you get <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> We didn't talk about what wah that was. Is that a Hendrix wah? It it's an like RMC a... Tease wah, oh. which are probably the best wah was being made. Nice, yeah. nice. I just got a new wah from Jam Pedals. I haven't tried out yet. I'm the Wacko or Wacko? Yeah, the big yellow one. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the. G- <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We need to. How are we going to do the Wall of Fame? We need to figure that out. How are we going to do the uh, the Shoyles Wall of Fame? Maybe we should actually do it in your shop. Oh yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Just, <laughs> just like, like have little pictures printed out somewhere, them. and just like a frame on the wall, of ten oh, out of ten rigs. It should be like, um, like at a restaurant or something where like <laughs> you know, like just like printed off little pictures and pin them on like a a, yeah. a, a cork board. We're gonna be um, what is it? Shenanigans from uh, <laughs> yeah. Does that play shenanigans? Mozzarella sticks and the goofy shit all over the walls. Uh-huh. Oh man, there you go. Okay. What a great rig, man. That, yeah. Yeah, Devin. We took our if time it, on this one. We're, we did, <laughs> but I, I feel like that's what the people like. You know what I mean? Just two, two, uh, two pretentious uh, <laughs> nerds that are full of themselves talking insider baseball about guitar rigs. That's oh, man. Do. Before we get into the thing we thought about talking about, we should talk about... Um, so TC Electronic released a... Clon clone called the right. Zeus with a lightning oh, yeah. bolt on it, <laughs> and we we talked about this a little bit, but I made a joke on the YouTube video, and then people, some a few people thought I was being really serious and being a jerk, and I was really mad about it, and or you know, like I, I just thought it was kind of ironic that another company would take like something related to myth. And put it on that, and uh, you know, I, I said something along the lines like, uh, "Clon clone with a Zeus on it." Hmm, I feel like someone's done that before, you know. Just like just right. being, just being tongue in cheek, yeah, yeah. Just, just being myself. <laughs> and um, so it, it put some people's panties in a twist, and I, you know, I didn't mean to to hurt anyone's feelings, and I genuinely think it's just a coincidence. Yeah, that. I one hundred percent a a a Greek god on a overdrive pedal, you know that's legendary. <laughs> okay, easy done. I did it. It's not that hard to think of, you know. I. It's not I that far fetched. Being no. that the centaur is a mythical beast, right? Of Greek origin, you know, like it's really not that far fetched. And I I also agree. I think it is just a coincidence. I yes. I doubt TC Electronic is like coming after your market share because the thing is like if if somebody was looking at a mjolnir or a tc electronic pedal it's not like they would be confused between right. which was which and what is the the tc even retail for is it i, I oh, imagine like, it's gonna be relatively affordable i think it's like 80 i don't know 80 or 100 bucks it's like you know yeah their budget great. yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's awesome tc electronic makes great pedals um i've had multiple polytunes over the years those are my tuners of choice um, oh they're, they're 60 dollars says sugar tooth well there you go man going after the soul food market yeah so yeah i agree man but see that's the thing about the internet i saw a chibson post that can i just say that chibson is my favorite instagram account right i, I adore everything that they do over there it's just 
right up my alley, the type of humor that I love. And so they did a post recently. Maybe we should drop it on the video where uh, they have the, oh. the logo T-shirts <laughs> that are just the V so that, you know, uh, like when when JC or any of the big, you know, executives are wearing their blazer over their hip Gibson shirt or Marshall shirt. It just shows that. And so <laughs> there was a comment. Let me actually read this comment because it it's the ultimate just like whoosh. Right. Kind of moment. Um, Cause I feel like if you know anything about, the, if you even looked at the chips in account, you should understand that it is all jokes. Um, how, how you couldn't get that. How I mean, you like, couldn't get that. Maybe it's people that just, they, you know, they go to the magnifying glass on Instagram and they just see these <laughs> things and not really know. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to call it the username, but if you, if you go to the post, Top comment that they pinned, that Chibson pinned, is shameful. If you're going to knock off a brand, at least be clever about it. <laughs> it's like, bro. Uh, <laughs> so my point is that, like, yes, you can, even if you are so blatantly obvious, and I would argue, playing devil's advocate, that the way you said it, some people could mistake it as not being a joke, right? Right. Of course. Of course. But... The other part of that is like people, a lot of people on the internet just don't, they just don't get stuff sometimes and it's okay. It happens. It's hard just reading a comment. It's it. Oh man. It's the, it's the worst. It's the worst. (laughs) But I just like, I don't know. I, those things get under my skin, but, uh, this TC electronic has no idea who I am. No. Um, nor do they care. Nor well, they probably do. No, they probably do. I don't think so. I don't think so. I I'm, think they do. Uh, I I met who is the guy that d- used to do all the videos and he left and he works at Source Audio now. Uh, Tor is that his name? I think it's Tor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I met him and he he knew who Mythos was, but but that was before Behringer bought TC Electronics, so uh, they don't know. Oh yeah, I forgot. And about also, that. I don't want to piss them off too bad because they sell me the chips for the delay pedal. So because uh, they they all own Cool Audio, so yeah, I don't want my Bucket Brigade uh, thing to dry up. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. It was just one of those those things where like a, an odd coincidence felt kind of on the nose, but at the same time completely random. And um, <laughs> I don't know. I yeah, so mouth. so public statement: uh, You're not actually pissed off at TC <laughs> Electronic for making for ripping off the Mjolnir. No, I do not care, and um, <laughs> you know, it's fine. Oh, it's all fine, everyone. It's fine. It's all fine. Just calm down. It'll be fine, or it won't be fine. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe it'll all just fall apart. Maybe they'll Either sue way. me, and yeah. and and Mythos will be gone, and I'll maybe start my new. I'll be gone tomorrow. Yeah, who knows. So now y'all are all getting an inside look at my uh, my brain. This might all be over soon. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just just counting the days. Oh man, I'm uh yeah, I'm I'm really fighting hard to just like keep pulling up on the stick here and, and keep <laughs> uh, keep us from just circling the drain and going into a real dark place on this episode. <laughs> so, oh man, let's get on to uh, the topic here because I think it's gonna be an inter- interesting discussion. Right. So recently. Uh, John Myers, mm-hmm. he just released some new music. Did you know John Myers' piece sitting down? <laughs> <laughs> you've seen that, right? No. You, you've never seen John Mayer has a TV show? Oh, like that was way back in the day, right? Way, like when he's he a, would, yeah, yeah, In yeah, a bear yeah, suit. Yeah. In yes. Like the- <laughs> yeah. And he would like go, go to the parking lot of his own <laughs> show, dress up in a bear suit and interview people. Genius. Yeah. It's, Genius. The, I remember when I saw that, I was like, okay, no, this guy is funny. Like yeah, all these people that think he's like, like so far up his own ass. And I think for a time he was, but at the same time, he definitely knows how to make fun of himself. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. If you've never seen it, just get on YouTube. If it's still there. I don't even know if it's still there. John I Mayer has, a, John Mayer has a TV show and it's, there's like a part with like old dirty bastard or something. Is like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> It's Are so they like random. sitting at a table or something and he's interviewing him and it's the most just, it's so funny, man. Oh, it's so funny. It's so good. Yeah. It, anyway, so he released a new tune and I thought we could talk about it because yeah. I mean, Mary Spender's friends with him now. And yeah, they're, they're fast friends now. We're not jealous. Which, honestly, uh, not jealous at all. I'm a little jealous. Um, no, in all honesty, if you haven't seen Mary's few videos, so she had 
talk about a great idea and talk about someone who's really clever. She had the idea of he had been teasing his new single on TikTok, and she did this thing where she took the the single, the, like the 10 second snippet and like extrapolated on that and finished the song based off of what she thought it would be. Mm-hmm. And um, some people brought it to John's attention and he saw it and retweeted it and posted about it on, on Instagram. Anyway, long story short, they kept up and uh, now Mary got to like do a reaction video because John gave her early access. To song. Very, very cool, especially for Mary. Mary's yeah, oh, a yeah. friend of both Zach and ours. And, you know, I'm a huge John Mayer fan. Mary's a massive John Mayer fan. Um, so it was really, really cool. I talked to her on um, on Saturday for a while about it. And uh, yeah, it was, yeah, I'm really happy for it, man. Yeah, she, she good for her. It. Yeah. So um, I, yeah, so the single, um, it's a it's a vibe. It It is a vibe from the 80s. If you haven't heard it yet, even if you're not a John Mayer fan, I think you should check it out because I think it's really cool. Aaron Sterling on drums, who I'm mm-hmm. a huge fan of. Um, apparently, he recorded this whole record like in his house. I, I was following and saw some pictures um, where they essentially turned like his living room into a live room. They had, a, I believe, an SSL console like out in the backyard <laughs> under a tent. And they're just running all the stuff into the, the house. Mad respect for that. So, yeah, what do you uh, hot take, Zach? What do you think? I, I'm, I, it, kind of, it kind of bores me. Really? Yeah, the, the, I mean, because like it's a very repetitive, like kind of riff, like throughout the whole thing. It's kind of like, um, I, I mean, it's a fine song. I think it's very forgettable. Uh, mm. It doesn't feel like the first single off a record that you're gonna keep humming and and thinking of, like so many of his other first singles off records. Because I, I really like John Mayer too. I'm not as much a fan now as I used to be especially around like continuum and battle studies and stuff. Like I was like really into it, Mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I don't know. I just thought it was a bit of a, like, I like the vibe of it. Like, you know, the, 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 it's definitely got this like eighties Eric Clapton. So, you know, like that sort of pop music, guitar pop music thing throwback, but it just, I don't know. I was like, okay, I've heard that's a song. And then (laughs) it's like moved on, (laughs) you know, I love it. Yeah. I I think I think I think you take it for what it is, which is a fun summertime driving song that is simple. I mean the opening lyrics are so, if you want to roll me, then you got to roll me all night long. Why well, I mean, what the hell what the hell does that even mean? Is that, <laughs> right. Is, is that like a sex thing? Is that like a I don't know. But it's simple and it's repetitive and it's catchy. I I love I love the production value of it. I love the sounds they get, that big synth string. I'd love to know what synth they used on it. The drum sounds are stupid good. Right. Um, Have you watched it, the video yet? No, I haven't watched the video Oh, yet. it's like, oh, you got to watch the video. It looks like, you know, extreme or like something from, <laughs> from that era. There's like, like the guy playing the, the synth has like two, like one on each side of him and he's like yeah. playing like a prophet and then like other things like <laughs> at the same time, it's like, oh, come on. It's yeah. great. I mean, I like, I love, I think it's like fun uh, the video, but the song, it, yeah. I mean, like I get it. I think this will strike a chord with people, but to me, it just is like, it's, it feels really safe. You know, yeah. and kind of in, in a little, it's not interesting to me at all. Well, but you also have to keep in mind too, like it's the first single off the new record. Right. Time of year they're releasing it. He's, they're probably thinking about releasing something. This is going to be a fun, something people are going to play at, you know, dur- during the summer and whatever. I also like that there's basically a continuous guitar solo through the entire song. Mm-hmm. Even over like Mary Morris's backing vocals, he's just playing over the whole thing. <laughs> I think the tone is cool. I think his parts are cool. He's he's juxtaposing the the mixolydian and minor pentatonic sound over the major chord progression, which I always really like. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe there's a video in there somewhere, but that's something I, I like doing as a player. They actually probably ripped off from listening to John Mayer all those years. You're playing over a major diatonic p- progression, just playing the the minor pentatonic, um, yeah, from that key and getting in there and getting that sort of mixolydian sort of sound is really fun. Um, yeah, I, I'm into it, man. 
I'm here for it. Anytime that there's, and it'll do well on the pop charts, which is a big thing as guitar players. Uh, we should hope that it does well because it's a guitar song. It's a guitar driven song um, released by a contemporary pop star. I would say Mayer still is a, a contemporary pop uh, star. It'll it'll chart top 40 for sure. Yeah. And uh, I think, yeah, I'm here for it. Get more people listening to guitar stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't feel like... My... F- hmm. I don't know if I would really even consider it that much of a guitar tune. Like, Well, compared to a lot of the other stuff that's out there right now. Well, oh, yeah. Well, of course. Yeah, then in that respect, sure. I mean, looking back at even... Um, like Paradise Valley and those records, I feel like the guitar work on that was so interesting and, and, and like definitely permeates the tune. Um, in a, I don't know, in a, in a more interesting way. I mean, I'm not saying this is a bad song. I just was expecting something a little bit different. Um, I, I knew it was going to be like this just based off all the stuff I'd seen on his Instagram, like the, the, the photos <laughs> of like the, 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 the music video set. It's like, okay. I love it, man. I'm, I'm so, I'm so into it. What do you think of the pink silver sky? I'm here for it. Yeah. It's pretty it. like bubblegum. It, uh, it's a, it's a pink. It's pink. Right. It's yeah. pink, pink. Like when we say pink, the first color that pops into your head, that's, it's that color. It's hello kitty guitar pink. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> Is that the first like pink pink guitar PRS has ever done? You think? I mean, oh, maybe no. a, a custom thing, but I haven't seen a PRS in that color before. I'm sure they've they've done a bunch of pinks. I don't know. I've never seen a PRS of that pink, um, but I've seen pink PRS guitars for sure. There was Tyler was, in the chat says flamingo pink, and I think that's the exact. Yeah, that's it. Flamingo yeah. pink. Um, I, I there was one I saw on Reverb for a while, and it it. It was really, it was kind of cool. I can't remember what model it was, um, but it was like, had something like grandma's pink. It was like, it's like it looked like, uh, like your grandmother's furniture sort of thing. <laughs> and it was actually a really kind of cool. It was like a metallic, like pink. it looked like, like the, yeah, like a couch at your grandmother's house that she'd had since the sixties right. that was pink right. and had all those like kind of metallic threads in it. <laughs> yeah. That now someone would pay $10,000 for. Right. Oh, yeah. Man, yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah, dude, speaking of, there's like outdoor furniture. Tilly and I are trying to find like an outdoor furniture set for our back deck. Oh. And these vintage, I I don't know what it's called. I don't know anything about furniture. I don't want to know anything about furniture. Not interested. But there's uh, this specific set of outdoor, it's like metal outdoor glider chairs from the late 60s. Mm. And people are paying thousands of dollars for these sets of, of and they were like cheap back in the 60s they're like cheap shitty outdoor furniture but it's got the look that people are into now and it's thousands and thousands of dollars going for them just, oh, man uh, i ugh. i don't when we bought like our outdoor furniture set <laughs> we're taking a hard right <laughs> yeah hard right <laughs> um morgan was like wanting to get some like kind of like nice stuff and and I, in hindsight, I wish we'd spent a little bit more money, but like the fact that it's just out there getting in the sun's beating on it, and it's not something you used all the we use all the time, and we we go outside a lot, but we're not like often like sitting on our little couch out there. It's like I I'm almost okay with just buying kind of cheap outdoor furniture and replacing mm-hmm. it every couple of years because. Yep. Yeah, unless you have like a porch or something. But yeah, I mean, we anyways, have so, that porch, but it like it, even then, like the sun on one side of it, and we like what we bought wasn't necessarily cheap, but like the whole side of it, all the wood has been just like destroyed. Cooked, yeah, and oh, it's yeah. rough. So, anyways, I, I'm here for it, man. I'm I'm really wait. I'm, I'm not done talking see... about furniture. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> Continue, I'm please. I'm please I'm go kidding. ahead. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> um, look, I'm a John Mayer fan. Um. I have been for a really long time, you know, even if, even though it's in some circles, it's not cool to be seen as a John Mayer fan. I don't care. I think he's an incredible songwriter. He's an incredible guitar player. Um, he's incredibly quick witted and he's got a great mind for social media and content, which I really respect. So yeah, man, I, I like the new song. I'm excited to hear what the rest of the record sounds like. I mm-hmm. think was it, I saw he posted a picture with Don was and, and uh, Marin Morris because Marin 
sang the background vocals in this song. Sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, for like a couple lines. <laughs> like Yeah. Yeah. But um yeah, because Don was did the Paradise Valley mm-hmm. soundtrack soundtrack <laughs> album. <laughs> and uh so if, if Don produced this record as well, I don't know who who produced it, but he's he's in the the music video for just like a second. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. But r- real quick, what are your favorite John Mayer records? I mean, Continuum. I think Continuum is, that's like a once in a lifetime album for an artist like that. And not just from like John's perspective as the writer and singer and player, but from an, an engineering and a production standpoint, that record stands up to me as one of the best sounding albums ever. It's unbelievable how good that record sounds the guitar tones on that record are stupid good again even if you're not a fan of that if that's not your style of music that's totally fine i think objectively though you can't argue with the fact that that record sounds amazing yeah um steve jordan playing drums you know it's just it's great and then besides that i really loved Battle Studies, the follow-up record to Continuum. That was a really mm-hmm. good era. Um, and then I loved Paradise Valley. I didn't like Paradise Valley at first, but as I've kind of gotten a little older, yeah, it's I've really come around on that record. There's some really good songs on that record. Yeah, dude, Born and Raised and Paradise Valley. I, I, I the Continuum is my favorite, but those two would would be a close second. I think I, I yeah. really like them, and and I feel like they. There's clever songs, but they're very, I mean, you can tell he's being, it's a little more serious, you know? Yeah. And, and I, I love those records. I, I really, really, really like them. So, yeah. So I'm excited to see what he does with this record, man. <laughs> sure. Um, it seems, uh, it seems like a new, a new old things that are older now, new again, kind of thing. Yes. <laughs> so yes. I'm, I'm excited to see what that looks like through the lens of, uh, John Myers, John Myers. And his pink guitar. <laughs> you know, John Myers doesn't write any of his own songs. <laughs> John Mayer. <laughs> My God, I need to go watch that again. Yeah. So do you have a shill? Um, no. <laughs> That's okay. Why don't you I, go ahead? Well, in honor of the pink guitar, I want to show something pink I got. Oh, yeah. The pinkest wah the world has ever seen that's that is that like hurts to look at it's so pink oh yeah you stare at this too long and then like all you see is like green like <laughs> uh, it's messing up my camera's color balance um this was at east side music supply i love east side i go there anytime i'm like out doing anything and i well out, out driving around i don't really have anything to do i go by east side and they always have like something fun in the pedal case and i saw this and i was like oh i have to get I that need that <laughs> still got the plastic on the bottom yeah right new it's well, it's new ish. There's a lot of animal hair in the like the little oh. <laughs> lubricant of the, the gear, mm. which happens. But it's just a normal law. It's just like a, a the standard crybaby. So I'm gonna like uh modify it and have fun with it and um and see what I can do because I love modifying waws and I love Wawa. And now I have one the, I'll, I'll never lose in a closet again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's true. You'll never you'll never lose sight of that damn thing. Mm-mm. That's cool. And it's just like, what, a straight ahead crybaby? Just the normal uh, GCB95, like the standard crybaby. So it's not true bypass. It doesn't have anything <laughs> fun going on inside. But I'm going to I'm gonna modify it. I'm going to get a uh, Fazel, which is, or Fazel. I don't, again, another All right, third time today. Let's, let's get it in the chat. Is it Fazel? Is it Fazel? Yeah, I, man. But I'm going to get one that's, I, my favorite is the yellow one. Mm. And I want to get one and tape it off and paint it pink and put it inside. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey, maybe that's an episode we could do. Uh, modding pedals. How to get into modifying guitar pedals. I can. I could finally finish that tube screamer. Oh my god! That you've had for like a year. Oh my gosh! Or longer yeah. than a year. Almost. Almost. Um, yeah. I see it in my closet like every couple days. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I should modify that. But I. I but that was. That was the thing is I had to make a video of it um, because you wanted that for your video. And oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I don't even know where because I started shooting that video and I have no idea where those video files are. 
You shot some dumb. on your phone when we did the podcast in person here that one time. Okay, okay. So they're that somewhere. was they're buried somewhere. That was like the eighth episode. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna do one. I've got um, I've got a pretty good one. So this week played the gig with Noah, took an amp, mm-hmm. um, and really enjoyed it. I used the uh, the Amp Nation um, down there. Mm-hmm. Which one is and that? That is the... Uh, why am I blanking on the name? Hold on. Let me turn it around. For the camera. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is the Wonderland Overdrive. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, here you go. Um, got this from Taylor last year. He sent it to me as a loner and um, to check out. And I played it, and I got it for the first back. Well, one of the first backstage live shows is right when he sent it to me. And mm-hmm. uh, sorry, I'm just gonna tilt the camera down. Um, sent it to me as a loner, and I basically emailed him and said, "Yeah, I, you're not getting this back. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm gonna keep this." And he said that was fine. And um, so essentially, this is not like a straight ahead Dumble clone. This mm-hmm. model, he does do Dumble clones. If you watch RJ's channel, you've probably seen a bunch of these, but. Essentially, this is a sort of sort of a two-channel amp. Um, right now, I've got two six V sixes in it, so it's twenty-two watts. You can swap it out for six L sixes uh, and go up to fifty watts. A little bit cleaner, clean sound. But um, yeah, it's basically the way Taylor, the guy who builds these, described it: is the clean channel is like Continuum era Mayer clean tones, right? So. Come for full circle here. Um, And then the overdrive, which is right here, is very like Dumble, ODS, overdrive special, Robin Ford type tones. And he's he's spot on with that description. Um, It's got a it's got a reverb. The reverb is interesting. It's it's not like a blackface fender reverb. It's it's pretty quiet and it's pretty long and pretty dark. So it, it kind of sits underneath you're uh, you're playing there. It's not very present, and the reverb circuit actually adds gain. So I always oh. I always have the reverb up around half because I like what it does to the rest of the the rest of the circuit. Sure. Um, so yeah, I, I took this on the gig and played it with Noah, and it sounded awesome. Does it? Um, I think it's like laid out similar to the Bloomfield, right? It's got. I think so. I mean, you can see um, contour reverb drive level, and then but, this is. Is the is the gain channel is it it's a is it a separate channel or is it like a boost that works in front of the clean it's channel? It's a so essentially I'm not sure how it's laid out in the circuit, right. but you have a foot switch or you have um, this switch the overdrive switch which will engage the sorry I'm doing this from verse the drive control and the drive level control mm-hmm. which interacts with the master volume. Yeah, here, Jesus, I can't see. Um, and then you have this PAB switch here which I believe bypasses the tone stack yeah that's um, it's similar to the bloomfield uh um, yeah yeah and and the bloomfield the it has the reverb is interesting on it too and it has uh like a send return knob on the back for the reverb so you can kind of like balance it it's like an additional reverb control and like you don't just have the one on the face you can actually kind of mix it even further with the knob on the back on, on that thing yeah, this one you can't. It's just the the reverb control on the face it does have an effects loop as well. Yeah, uh, which I sometimes use. But yeah, this thing's been great. He sent me the matching one twelve cab in this suede. I mean, come on, look at this. Yeah, with the Vox grill cloth, dude. It, it, this is a good looking amp. You know. Yes, I think I think Two Rock can't do the Vox thing in, anymore. I think they might have someone might have said don't they do it. Got got. They yeah. might got got. But that's fine. That's fine. So uh, yeah, we we have to shoot those amps out at some point. We yeah, we, I need to get a case for it. I um, let's see. Uh, somebody in the chat's asking what speaker it came with. It's got a uh, a cream back. Nice one twelve. Um, so I want to start taking it out. I've got a show with. We've got a full band show in Wisconsin, June twenty fifth, Country Fest, Friday, June twenty fifth. If you are uh, in this Wisconsin era, come out and see No Guthrie in Good Trouble. Um. But I don't have cases for that amp. And right. like I, I took it and I was super ginger with it, even loading it in the back of the van and everything. And it was just one day. And I still kind of messed up the Tolex a little bit. So yeah, I don't know. Unless I can get road cases made for it, which with COVID, 
everything being so backed up is probably not going to happen anytime soon. I think right. I'm not going to take it out on the road. I think the wall really did mess up the color of my camera because my face looks really pink now, or maybe I'm <laughs> maybe I'm having a stroke. This might be a time to call it. <laughs> yep, this might be the time. All right. Awesome. Th- thanks for listening, everybody. Yeah. See you all next week.